All right, that's question two. Let me put this to one side. We will return to it. Uh, yeah, let's pop it all the way out of the way. And let's read question three together. This falls under the nature of proof now. So consider statement P. If f of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals a, then f of a doesn't exist. Which of the following must be true? And what we're considering is um, P and its converse. Um, this is P, and then I need to be able to state the converse and work out uh, of all of these different combinations, it's either they're both true, they're both wrong, um, false, um, or one of them is true and the other one is false, so I just need to sort out which is which, okay? So it might be helpful to uh, first think about the statement P because it's right there in front of us. Um, if f of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals a, does it then necessarily follow that f of a does not exist, that it can't exist? Now, the answer is uh, this statement, statement P, um, it is true. How do I know? Well, the first piece of the puzzle is that I have to recognize when you say f of x, um, what that means is, uh, this has to be a function because this is function notation, right? So I'm dealing with functions, not relations. That's important um, for a particular reason. You'll see why in a second. And then I've got a vertical asymptote at x equals a. So let's think of some examples for what this could be. If I draw myself up a quick and dirty, uh, this is not an Arglian diagram, this is just a Cartesian plane, right? Um, if I were to say, well, what's, what's a function I know about that has a vertical asymptote at x equals a? Um, perhaps the first thing that you went to was, uh, maybe if I think about something like one over x, your old familiar hyperbola, right? Um, this has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. There you go. And sure enough, um, f of zero doesn't exist. If you try to substitute zero into one over x, you get one over zero, which is undefined. So you think, oh, okay, well this, um, this is an example, um, but that doesn't prove that it's always true. Can I, can I think of some kind of function that has a vertical asymptote, but f of, um, you know, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals a, but if I substitute in a, I still get a value, okay? And you can think of um, graphs, curves on a Cartesian plane that would do this. Um, but the only problem is um, you break one of the conditions of the question, and I wonder if you can work out which one it is. If, for example, um, I were to give you a, um, a graph and it had a vertical asymptote like this, so let's call that x equals a, and can I conceive of a graph that would look something like uh, this? I'm going to draw something like this, which looks very similar. And then I'm going to draw something like uh, this. Okay, now, this looks really weird, right? What is going on here? Um, this is going to be a, a mess of a graph. You might think, how could I even come up with a function that does this? And the answer is, it's not as hard as you think. Maybe I should say, <laughs> function's the wrong word. Uh, as you'll see in a second. Can I think of an equation that would give me this? The answer is you can if you think about a graph like that. You've seen graphs like this, you've seen it within extension one, not frequently um, because here I'm, I'm crossing a horizontal asymptote and that doesn't happen very often, um, but you can come up with a function that'll do this um, because horizontal asymptotes can be crossed. Horizontal asymptotes don't tell you anything about the function in kind of um, the normal domain, it only tells you about the extremities, right? So at positive and negative infinity, I'm approaching the horizontal asymptote, but I can cross it in the middle, no problem, right? So this could exist. And so in order to turn this into this, all I'd have to do is take whatever equation I had before, swap my y's and my x's, and you would get this graph. Now the reason why I can say, but this is not possible, this, this is not something I need to consider, is because of what I said right at the beginning. I said f of x has to be a function because this is function notation. This graph that I've drawn over here is not a function. It's a relation. So there's no y equals f of x that could give you this. Um, you could have an equation that has x's and y's in it, but it wouldn't be an f of x anymore. Um, it would be you know, an x equals f of y situation. Uh, and so you can exclude that. It's not going to be possible. So what that means is uh, statement p, is always going to be true. If you have a vertical asymptote on a function, and there's no way that um, x equals a, in this case x equals zero, there's no way it can exist. It's going to be excluded from the domain. Okay, so what that does is it, it tells me um, p is true, so any of the options where p is false I can exclude. So uh, p is false in this one, p is false in this one. So it's just going to be either a or b. Now, to then understand the next part, I need to be able to state the converse. What, what is the converse 
of a statement. Um, it has to do with saying, okay, if I can say this statement in one direction, can I say it in the opposite direction? So at the moment, what I've got is if f of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals a, then f of a does not exist. So you can see, here's the if, um, this is the uh, antecedent clause right here, f of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals a, and then I've got the then, right, and then here's the, um, here's the next part, right, so this is the condition, this is the result. A converse reverses the order. So I would say the converse could be stated as, if f of a doesn't exist, does that then mean f of x will then have a vertical asymptote at x equals a? Is it true that f of a not existing definitely guarantees you have a vertical asymptote? Now hopefully in the way that I'm saying it and pausing on it and lingering, you're seeing this can't possibly be true. Um, f of a can not exist without there being a vertical asymptote. And there are many, many examples of this. So all I need is a counter example. So let me give you two. Um, I could think of a graph um, in fact, you, um, you saw ones that looked a bit like this before. I could think of a graph where f of a doesn't exist, um, where it looks fairly pedestrian, but it just has a hole punched out of it. Um, this is a graph where x equals zero doesn't exist, but there's no vertical asymptote. There's no asymptotic behavior going up towards positive or negative infinity. You might say, well, what kind of function is that? Well, this could be f of x equals x squared on x. You might say, isn't that equal to just x? And the answer is no, because if I just said it was equal to x, um, I'd get this entire line. But because this, the way it's stated, has an x in the denominator, I can't divide through by zero here. Um, even if you get zero on the denominator, you can't get zero divided by zero. That's undefined. So therefore, you've got um, f of zero not existing without a vertical asymptote. So there you go. There's a single count example. That's all I need. You might say, though, that's that's weird. Like, do we have any other example? You know, less exotic examples. And the answer is, we have tons. Um, if you think of any function that has some kind of restricted domain, um, you know, say the square root of x that only exists for um, x is greater than or equal to zero, um, or if I say, you know, log x that only exists for um, positive values of of x. You can't even get x equals zero. So in this case, if I take any a over here, any negative value, try and put in, you know, f of negative one. It's not going to exist for f of x equals log x. But that doesn't mean that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative one. There's a vertical asymptote here, but there's no vertical asymptotes over here. There's, there's nothing over there, right? So uh, this is the way that I, not that your working was required for this because it was a multiple choice question, um, but this is the way that I reasoned it. Um, I've got, let me just come back here f of x uh, is a function, not a relation, and that's part of the, the definition of you know, function notation. Um, and I said vertical asymptote at x equals a, it does imply that f of a is undefined, so that's statement p. Um, but when I have a look at the converse, that's not true. And here, here are the um, examples that I gave. A discontinuity, like that little hole punched out, um, or when you're just outside the domain, as I said, log x is my example there. So that gives us uh, the reason why uh, b is the correct answer over here. Okay, now I've already got it on screen, so I might as well just very quickly talk about question four. Uh, the argand diagram shows the complex numbers z and w, where z lies in the first quadrant, uh, w lies in the second quadrant. So there's z, there's w. Which complex number could lie in the third quadrant? And this was done pretty well, uh, but just so you can see what's going on. W, um, take away z, which is the correct answer, um, you can see I can position it over here by vector addition. Um, what is W take away z? It's W plus negative z. So if z is heading off it from the origin up into the first quadrant, then negative z is going to look like this. That's negative z, or that'll be the equivalent displacement vector. So that's why you can see me doing it over here. So if you start at w, you go down, um, you add negative z, you're adding one vector after another, lands you over here in the third quadrant. So that's why w take away z is fine. Uh, real quickly, you can see on the diagram, by the way, where would the other options be? Um, let's say conjugate of z, that's going to be down here. That would, you know, z bar would be something like that. 2iz, um, the 2 um, extends the magnitude, so it's going to be further away, and then that i, its um, effect is m rotating anti-clockwise by pi on 2 radians. So therefore, um, I guess I'd be somewhere like 
uh, let's see here. So that looks like a, a right angle to me. Um, that's using the same magnitude roughly and I need to be twice as far away. So I'm just gonna go over there. So that would be something like two I, Z. And then what's the last one? Negative W, um, let's do this in another colors because it's getting busy. Um, here's, here's W, so I'm just gonna um, reflect across the origin um, because that's what a, a negative sign does. So I'm gonna go all the way over here. That'd be negative W and you can see all those options are outside of the third quadrant. So that's why we end up with option C.